Okie dokie, so flipping the fuck out on a stranger didn't work. It just made things worse for everybody involved. If it had made things worse for everybody but Travis, then he would have been satisfied. But it was probably never going to shake out like that. Now he was trying to do the exact opposite. Lowering the energy in a conflict to the point that it would be imperceptible. After all, friction without heat isn't friction. It's just two objects sliding past each other peacefully. Travis had to take his car into a body shop because some people had keyed it, drawing a graphic image of a phallus on it, with a portmanteau of two epithets written on the shaft. He needed to kill a few hours, and he needed to clear his head, so he went to the movie theater down the street to see if there were any cheap matinee tickets. As Travis was walking toward the doors of the theater, he was looking at the sign to see what they had playing, and he didn't even notice the two characters approaching him. Hey, man, one of them said. You 18, right? What? Travis turned to see a couple of teenagers. They were the annoyingly tall type of teenage boys, and just by looking at them, Travis could tell that they were probably the kind of teenagers who enjoyed making bombs out of Coke bottles filled with a <laughs> throwing them in open windows. You're 18, right? Asked the other one. We need somebody to buy us tickets. W what movie are you seeing? Travis recognized that he was once again being pressured by a stranger to do something that he didn't want to do. He reminded himself of his new idea to just civilly talk it out, which he was especially grateful for now because he couldn't imagine that the whole public anger strategy would go over too well if he used it in public on a couple of minors. So Travis told himself to just think through his words before he spoke and just have a calm, rational conversation. I don't know what movie I want to see yet. Well, then why are you here? I'm just here to kill time. I, 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 I might leave if I don't see anything I like. Well, we, we need somebody to buy us tickets for the Hellseekers Club. Can you buy us some? Do you have the money? Of course we have the money. What the fuck do you take us for? I don't know your life. Maybe you want me to buy the tickets for you. I know people who would do that. Well, you don't know us. We're not those people. We have the money. Can you buy us the tickets or not? And Travis really didn't want to, but he had a funny feeling that they would want to know why not. So he thought maybe a little bit more logical deduction would scuttle them off. Can't you just buy tickets online these days? You need a credit card for that. Well, shit, that was supposed to be his clincher. I... Do not feel comfortable buying you tickets, especially if I don't even want to go see the same movie as you. Uh, you guys take care now. And with nothing more to say, Travis walked off toward the doors. But that wasn't the end of it. We will pay you extra to buy us the tickets, you fucking idiot. Do you want the money or not? One of them hollered. And Travis only had one thing to say to that, so he turned and said it as delicately as he could. Why would I want to help somebody who's screaming at me in, in the street that I'm an idiot? Did, did you think about that before you spoke? Come on, Dylan, let's go, said the other one, and they walked away, the one called Dylan visibly fuming. Travis wished that interaction hadn't gone down particularly like that, but he accepted it. He had achieved his goal of getting out of his conflict unscathed, and he knew that it only would have been worse if he had replied with anger. Travis got inside and saw the ticket window wasn't even being attended. All there was, was a couple of digital ticket machines. Travis picked an R-rated movie at random just to check, and sure enough, it didn't even ask for proof of age anywhere. And Travis thought that was really something. Travis's movie was in theater number 12. The whole cinema had recently been remodeled, so now each room had bigger, nicer, but fewer seats, and the seating was assigned when you bought your ticket. Travis's seat was G7, not too close, not too far, and right in the middle. Of course, somebody else already liked seat G7. A man and a woman were sitting in what Travis was pretty sure were seats G7 and G8, respectively, and after double-checking the label for the row on the carpet on the stairs and counting down the seats and their labels, he was sure they were. Now, the movie was some blockbuster in its eighth week, so the theater was actually mostly empty, so there were plenty of other places to sit. But what if someone showed up and saw Travis sitting in their seat, and that person wasn't so bashful? Travis thought that the person he wanted to be 
wouldn't just let people take his stuff without him even saying a word about it. As Travis made his way down the aisle, he saw the couple glance at him, then pretend not to see him. Excuse me, Travis said, and at first they started scooting back as if to let him pass. Uh, uh, uh no sir, I, I think you're in my seat, G7. Who cares, the theater's empty, sit somewhere else. Well, why can't you just sit in the seats that you picked? We randomly picked seats in the front row because we know nobody gives a shit about the assigned seats. I give a shit. Well, you're not normal. Now sit somewhere else. Note that throughout all of this, his girlfriend wasn't saying a word. She was just giving Travis a dirty look, too. Why would I take orders from a stranger who's talking down to me? Because I'm going to tell security that you're harassing us. I'll tell them that you're in my seat. You know, maybe you're in the wrong theater. Did you think about that? No, and I don't need to because all the other rooms on this side of the building are in the middle of a movie right now. This is the only one that's open. Well, maybe you should go to the hallway and check. And when you come back, don't sit anywhere near us. Okay, what's going on here? Asked an employee who popped up behind Travis. Travis would have preferred to have handled this alone for the sake of getting experience, but the person he wanted to be wasn't such a prideful asshole as to deny help when he could get it. Uh, hi, sir. Um, uh, I, I think this gentleman's in my seat. Th this is seat G7 in Theater 12, right? Is this a good time to mention that this creep has been harassing us? The theater employee just looked unimpressed. Tickets, all three of you, right now. Travis handed his over, but the couple just stood up and started to walk off. No, it's fine. We'll move. Sir, I'd still like to see your tickets. N it's fine. We're moving. Guys, please show me your tickets or I'm going to get security involved. Are you accusing us of sneaking in? Well, ma'am, if you hadn't snuck in, why would you be so hesitant to show me your tickets? Because it's none of your business. I work here, ma'am. It's very much my business. And in the privacy of his mind, Travis was taking notes. Again, Travis would have preferred the interaction to have gone smoother, but he got what he needed, and the mean people were arrested for being stupid enough to get caught sneaking into a movie, so he couldn't complain. But then again, this was twice in two tries that the other party just got angrier. Was his strategy not working? Or did he just keep running into difficult characters? Well, they say that once is an event, and twice is a coincidence. Would there be a third time to make it a trend? The movie itself was fine and all, but it was one of those that just made Travis feel bad about himself. Among many other reasons, he was jealous of the main character. He was one of those heroic types who wasn't quite like the person Travis wanted to be, but functionally, he was close enough. He was one of those whose allies adored him and whose enemies were jealous of him, who not only always knew the right thing to do, but always had the capabilities to actually do it. Hell, Travis was aware that as a character, this guy was poorly written for not having enough flaws. But God damn it, that just made Travis more jealous. Nothing about this character's personality was impossible to replicate. If somebody could conceive of such a person, why couldn't somebody actually be such a person? If Travis had one trait in common with this character of whom he was so deeply jealous, it was that they both wouldn't take impossible for an answer. The movie ended right as a couple of other movies got out, so when Travis went to the bathroom, it was actually pretty crowded in there. Travis successfully got a stall, which he preferred because he liked being able to sop all the moisture out of his urinary tract. When he got out, though, he saw that that thing was happening where each of the urinals had a small line formed behind it. Travis was grateful to beat the rush, but as he walked over to the sink, he heard, You gonna hurry up, buddy? At the urinal crowd, some guy was experiencing moderate to severe pee shyness, and the guy in line behind him was evidently losing his patience. Travis couldn't imagine what he would do if he were the guy trying to pee, but then he realized something. If he were in that situation, he'd wish somebody else were there to back him up and tell the guy behind him to fuck off. Right now, Travis could be that backup. And the person Travis wanted to be was somebody who was ready and able to intervene on somebody else's behalf at a moment's notice. Of course, such a person would also be able to discern between when intervention would be helpful and when butting into other people's business would just come across as self-righteous and annoying and possibly even make everything worse. But right now, Travis was pretty sure that it was the right thing to do. Hey! Travis hollered. I'll bet he can go faster if you quit bothering him. The men's room went silent. And that's when Travis realized that he had not planned for anything beyond that sentence. You say something? Y yeah, yeah, I, I think if you're pissed that he's taking a while, he he's just going to take longer. If you 
talk to him and make him nervous. What's it to you? I, I, I wouldn't want anybody talking to me like that, so, well, do you want somebody to kick your ass? But Travis had an answer to that that was neither yes nor no. Why would you threaten someone in a room full of people who can see you? But the man just walked over to Travis. And it was just then that Travis realized something. This was the third time that his audience had reacted negatively, which made it a trend. The man kept getting closer, and Travis began to say, Sir, think logically. Why would you... And then it hit him. With all the people he'd spoken to, his genuine appeals to logic and reason had come across as sarcastic. They didn't think he was being smart. They thought he was being a smart ass. Oh! Uh. <laughs> Why did nobody stop that guy from assaulting me? Travis asked the room in general. Man, you asked for that the second you decide to cut into other people's business. Upon closer inspection, Travis realized that this comment came from the same guy who was earlier having trouble peeing. Travis wasn't fully convinced that the whole civil discussion strategy was worth throwing out entirely. After all, it had still gotten him farther than anger did. But Travis just thought he didn't yet have the tact and self-confidence to use the strategy effectively. He had the arrow, but he didn't know how to use the bow. He planned to revisit the chivalrous conversation idea when he was a bit more developed in the smooth talking department, but for right now, his verbal skills were not unlike those of a bleeding sheep. Honestly, he was less embarrassed about his inability to realize his attempts at politeness were backfiring, and more embarrassed that he had overcorrected. It was all well and good that he would consider what an ideal version of himself would do, but he wasn't that person yet, and he never would be unless he could find a stopgap strategy to help himself out of tough situations now, not when he got his interpersonal shit together. Travis had somehow forgotten that the entire point of all of this was to find a short-term solution to bridge the gap to his long-term solution. Oh, Jesus Christ, this was so embarrassing. And, and Travis knew that when he acted stupid in public, it just made other people uncomfortable and wait. Wait. 